your watching gears. Hey, welcome to Gears. You know, a few weeks ago, we started a project called the Banshee, which involves stuffing a 400 horsepower small block Ford and a T5 five speed into a Mazda Miata. <laughs> The idea was to show you how to build a car similar to the old Shelby Cobra using an affordable late model car and some new and used parts. If you missed it, here's how we laid that old four banger to rest and shoehorned a V8 in its place. And that brings us up to where we are today. I mean, all the hard work is done, the drivetrain is in, and it's looking good, and it's ready to go, but there are a bunch of things that we need to address if we want this car to run with Corvettes and Vipers and things of that caliber. I mean, you know, going fast is great, but if you can't handle it, if you can't stop it, it's not a very good rig, and that's true whether it's a Mustang or a street rod or a 4x4. So, suspension's what you've been asking about, that's what we're gonna deal with first. Now, the Monster Miata kit actually comes with a really nice spring setup. They send heavier springs for the front to handle the weight of the V8, and then you take your existing front springs, cut a coil out of it, and use those on the rear. Now, if I was driving this car primarily on the street, this is what I would do. I mean, this is well-engineered, it's very effective. Unfortunately, this car is gonna spend a lot of time on the tracks and road courses, so I not only need something that will handle the weight of the V8, but is also adjustable and tunable. So, we are gonna start with these Coney shocks. Now, these are a gas shock that, like I said, are fully tunable to whatever driving situation that you've got. And then we're gonna pack them with these Eibach springs. Of course, the spring goes right on the shock, and you adjust it with the collar. Now, obviously, we're using a heavier spring on the front, or the V8, and on the rear, we've got a lighter spring. This is how they go in. Hey, you wanna put this one in for me? You want to put it in? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Show us a smile. <laughs> now, you don't have to be stuffing a V8 into one of these things to benefit from a shock and spring upgrade. <laughs> There's a lot of guys that are spec racing these cars with a stock four cylinder in them, and they're just doing fantastic. So, that goes to show you that there's a lot more to these cars than just cruising them all. Now, onto the brakes. Obviously, brakes are a huge issue on any project, but especially something that's gonna have the velocity of that car. And brakes is one of those issues where size matters. Ew. So, we went to our buddies at Bear Brakes and got the system that they have for the Mazda Miata. Now, look at this, check this out. What they do is convert from the tiny 10-inch rotor to this huge 12-and-a-half-inch drilled and slotted rotor. Now, to go with that, you have a dual piston caliper and, of course, all the hoses and hardware to hook it up. Now, I know this looks huge. It looks like it'll never fit. But believe me, this will go right in place of your stock brakes, and that's what we're going to show you. Once you have your old brakes off, make sure that you spend a little time in here cleaning things up, making them look good while you've got everything apart. You'll be glad you did when all your buddies start crawling under here checking out what you got. Now, just in case you're wondering, the control arms, the spindles, the steering, these are all strong enough to handle a V8, so you don't need to upgrade those. However, you will need to check your bushings, your ball joints, and your tie rod ends, because if those are bad, now's the time to replace them. Okay, to install the new brakes, just bolt the new bracket onto the spindle, Slide on the new rotor, then follow that with the caliper. And that is it. I mean, it's really that simple. You just bolt them on and boom, you got some brand new huge brakes. Matter of fact, 
The hardest part about this particular project is going to be finding a rim to go around it. You're going to need at least a 16 incher. We're going to deal with that a little bit later. All right, on to the rear brake. Now, for the rear, we're doing something a little different than the front because we're staying with the stock size rotor, but not the original rotor. Oh, now we're also putting on these bare, drilled, and slotted rotors to give us some better braking back here. Now, the cool thing is, they just slide in place of the original rotor, then we'll stick some new pads in the calipers, bolt them on, and we'll be ready to rock. Okay, that takes care of the brakes and suspension and brings the rest of the car up to the level of what's going on under the hood. So now what we're gonna do is roll this thing off of the lift, get out from under the hood for a while, and do something about those goofy white seats and a roll bar. That's coming up. Oh no, no, we're not looking at this yet. We'll get to this in a minute. We have some details we need to take care of on the Banshee project first. Now, we have spent a lot of time with the mechanicals of this. You have a new drivetrain in it. We have springs and shocks and brakes on it. Now it's time to deal with the safety factor of a car that weighs 2,500 pounds, but has a 400 horse Keithcraft racing engine in it. Yeah, I'm talking about a roll bar. Not a show bar, a real roll bar. Something that's not gonna fold up on you and crush you if you accidentally get the car on its lid. Yeah, the roll bar I'm talking about comes from Hard Dog Fabrications, and it's right over here. Now, since we're building a car that's gonna have the flavor of a 60s style sports car, like the Cobra, this is the bar we're gonna use. Now, this is called the Deuce, for obvious reasons. It's got dual hoops, very similar to the single hoop that you saw in the Cobra. Now, these are built out of thick, polished stainless steel, so they're very strong, and the mounting points were designed after years of SCCA competition. So these guys know how to protect you and keep the car looking good. Now, of course, you get all the hardware and all the brackets, everything that you're gonna need to bolt this thing into your Miata. Now, when you put on a roll bar, may want to think about upgrading your seat belts. So, we got these Willens five-point harnesses to hold us in the seats, and the cool thing about these is all the mounting points are already welded to the bar. So all you gotta do is bolt them on, and you're ready to go. Now, I know your first question is, how is that big, huge roll bar gonna fit in this little, tiny car? I mean, there's no room here. Yeah, there is. We just need to move a few things around first, starting with this crossbar and these plastic side panels. Now, pulling out old carpet <laughs> is usually a pretty nasty experience, especially on a convertible, because people put dogs in there and they spill Cokes and all kinds of stuff. So if your carpet's bad, now's the time to replace it. However, it looks like we lucked out here because this just needs to be cleaned up. Check it out. Okay, with this gas tank cover out of the way, you can see that all of a sudden, we've got some room here. I mean, the floor has just dropped about six inches. And right in this area here, that's where the bar is gonna go. So now all we have to do is just move some of these wires and cables and make room for the bar. Now, as you probably guessed, there is a little bit of trimming that has to happen here. This whole mounting flange has got to come off so the roll bar will slide into place. Now, this is where you're gonna be really glad that you picked up some of these Cornwell spot weld cutters. You did pick some of those up, didn't you? I told you a few weeks ago, those are a great tool to have in your box. They're not just for restoration because you never know when you're gonna to have to cut a spot weld. Once the spot welds are cut out, we'll take a saw and trim the rest. Then finish it all up with a grinder and some paint. All right, now comes the fun part, because it's time to get this thing in place. Of course, you will need an extra set of hands because it's a little awkward. All right, straight down. That's it. Thanks, Craig. All right, it's in, man. Look at that. It looks great. Now, how does it mount? That's the important thing. Ah, we're going to show you that after the break. Hey, we're back, and right in the middle 
of putting a hard dog fabrication dual hoop roll bar into this Miata to give us some serious rollover protection and also to stiffen this unibody in here, which is always a good idea, even if you're not stuffing a V8 into your car. Now, how does it do it? Well, very simple. Take a look at this. Notice we're using the factory mounting points where the original brace went, and we're also using the mounting point for the seat belts. So this is a very strong area here, but even that is not enough. So here along the sides and the back, we're gonna drill the holes and then bolt it on using the supplied backing plates for a strong mount to the strongest part of the unibody. And that's one of the main differences between a roll bar meant to protect you and a show bar, which is meant just to look good. Okay, remember when I told you a little while ago about people spilling Cokes in their cars and letting their dogs drool all over everything? Well, obviously that happened in this car because this gas tank cover is all rusty. So, we just picked up another one at the local salvage yard and now we get to cut it all to pieces. So, we'll make some marks. Trim the ends. And also cut some slots in the center so it'll fit around the bar. Then, once it's bolted back in place, we'll just trim the carpet. and the plastic side panels. To fit snugly around the bars. Then, just put it all back together and you are done. Now step back, man, take a look at this. This bar looks like it came from the factory in this car and that is awesome, but it's also functional. This bar could save your life, and that is the really big deal here. Now, check this out. You still have the use of your factory seat belts if you want them, and the top still operates and clears the roll bar. That is a huge issue. If you only have money for one modification on a convertible, you need to look into a roll bar. All right, now we are going to deal with something that's been driving me crazy ever since I rolled this car in, and it's those white seats. <laughs> They are so white. I mean, it looks like pimp my shoes or something. No, those have got to go. And believe it or not, they are white leather. So they'll clean up and these things will go like hotcakes on eBay. So that's where they're gonna go. Now, the color aside, the Mazda Miata seat is not a bad seat. It's just not a performance seat. There's not much here in the side bolsters or down here in the base to hold you in the seat when you're doing some performance driving. So this is how we're gonna change that. All right, you ready for this? You never quite know what you're gonna find under a seat. <laughs> oh, hey, we got some free money. We got a, got a new screwdriver and, whoa. <laughs> Man, I don't even wanna, <laughs> I don't know what that is. There you go. <laughs> wow, nasty, woo! <laughs> If you've got a cool project and would like to show millions of other gearheads what you're working on, you need to join Gears Nation. This is a free, interactive online community of auto enthusiasts that will allow you to learn from, share with, and encourage others, and at the same time, show off your project. There are also premium memberships available for access to special merchandise and the entire Gears catalog. If you're into mechanical things, you're welcome on Gears Nation. And who knows, you might even see your project on TV. Okay, the big question now is, what are we gonna stuff in the car now that it's empty? Well, they're not gonna be white, that's for sure. No, we're putting in these pro car rallies that we got from SCAT. Now, as you can see, they've got a tremendous amount of side support here, both in the back 
and down in the seat bottom. This will hold us in the seat when we're doing some performance driving, but they're still comfortable enough to drive every day. It's not a full-on racing seat. And of course, they're fully adjustable and with the adjustable headrest, which is really cool. This kind of has that, that old school hot rod look, which is gonna be perfect in that car. Now, we also got some universal mounting brackets, which means you can put these seats literally in any vehicle from a, from a Jeep to a, to a sports car. It just takes a few minutes to put them in. Okay, so what's next? Well, remember I told you that I was gonna upgrade these stock seat belts with these Willens harnesses to hold us in the seat when we're doing some performance driving. So that's what we're gonna do. Now the cool thing about these, they're really easy to put in, especially if you've got a roll bar. And that really is all there is to it. And that wraps up the Banshee project for today. Next time, it's gonna all be about the body. But the show's not over. No, we still got a van to look at. Now, as you can see, this van is heavily modified, and we're gonna get into all that. But the cool thing about this van is not just the modifications that were done to it, but the people that did it. One of the most diverse group of gearheads I've ever seen. Check them out. You've got Roger Trusty, also known as Monk. Mike Blasucci, but his friends call him Cool A. Then there's Will Powell, who we're gonna call the Ominator. Crystal Powell, also known as Sickle. <laughs> My nickname. <laughs> and Sammy Whitfield, who everybody knows as Big Show. She hides my scratch and stuff. Yeah. The van is owned by Roger Trusty, who was a very competitive, high-flying motorcycle racer, until an unfortunate accident knocked him flat on his back, but just for a little while. Actually, it, it took about a year. I was pretty depressed, and I just didn't want to get up out of bed. And I was the type of person, you know, I was used to working out, and uh, I had everything going for me, but I was good at racing and stuff. And that's what I wanted to make a career out of. And uh, I loved it more than anything, but then I got to thinking, like, you know, that just can't slow me down. I mean, I still do anything I want to. I ride jet skis, parasail. I do, I was going to bungee jump, but my mom busted me. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't long before Roger was out and about and messing with his van and making friends. <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah, what a blatant <laughs> advertisement <laughs> here. <laughs> like you said, I was just going to a hobby shop just to get my truck fixed, and I met him, and I kept asking him about the van, and he was like, let's go out and eat something. Yeah. That's right. We've been friends ever since. Ironically, this crazy van is what brought this unique group of people together, with a lot of the heavy work being done by Will Powell, in spite of what you may think. But I work for Rivergate Electronic Express, and people come in there like, you're not gonna install my system. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I just, I leave the chair on the outside of the vehicle, and I just crawl around over here. Yeah, I saw him. Crawl around. Baby, so I've been in life. this one, under it, yeah. wherever you can get. Sitting on airbags all around, the van will lay right down on those 22s if you wanted to. Or you can make it jump around and have some fun with it if you really want to get somebody's attention. So he brought it in to do the airbags. You did the airbags? I helped. I you helped up. You showed up? <laughs> okay, you saved the day, huh? Not, no, I just had to get dirty. The paint job is not only unique and loaded with details, the real eye catcher is the two $100 bills that have been buried in the clear coat just to make people stop and stare and experience the air horn. Wait till they're right there, yeah. right down close looking to at looking it. at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she got the same guy three or four times that he got. 
that, that one dude that y'all did it to, he turned around and ran into the expedition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> However, the real shocker is the fully functional Lamborghini doors, which were put in just to prove it could really be done. So you guys did the Lambo doors. Okay, now when you, tell me about it. I mean, the, you got the box here. That's actually really nicely done, man. Well, because it, uh, if we didn't put that on there, it wouldn't make it go up before 90 degrees. Yeah. And if you're going to do it, you might as well go ahead and do it right. So yeah. it wouldn't go 90 degrees, and that's when he came up with the box. Of course, the interior is loaded with a state-of-the-art sound system, as well as all the DVD screens and monitors you're ever going to need. And if you ever get lonely of sitting in those wild seats, all you have to do is look up because there's always somebody keeping an eye on you. <laughs> I think we finally found where Jimmy Hoffa's been hiding. How, how important would you say that friends are? Very important. Because without friends, you know, it's hard to get through some things, you know. Now, do you all, you guys all ride in the van when you're going out yeah. together? Or? You, we drive like in, a bunch of drive in movie theater, dude, that's yeah. the one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Eight dollars a car load? <laughs> they told that to the wrong people. Can you imagine these guys showing up at the car at the oh, drive in movie theater, yeah. man. We hey, we're here, man. We got to park in the back because you can't see over top of it. Yeah. We look like a bunch of circus clowns. We went to eat after the restaurant and. I'm feeding him, and everybody's like, look at the two handicapped guys. One guy's feeding the other one. They must have come off the charter boat. Yeah. So to, to somebody, like I said, that maybe that has had an accident or has come back from Iraq or something like that, and they're depressed, what would your advice be to them? Don't give up. Just get I mean, out and do something. Yeah. Live life to its fullest. Keep yourself yeah. busy. The longer you yeah. sit there. And you got to have a good woman at your side. I got a good woman. And every time we go to car show, she takes care of me. So. Now, where's she at today? She's at work. Okay. Where's she belong? No, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, man, that is cool. I would love to have a group of friends like that. Well, you can. The next time you see somebody like Roger or Will, man, don't feel sorry for them. Give them a hand. Or better yet, let them give you a hand build something cool like that van. Then when you do, send us some pictures because we definitely want to see it. So now the ball is in your court. Get out there, work on something. We'll see you next week.